Welcome everyone to the ActivityNet Dense Captioning Events in Videos Challenge. My name is Shamal Butch. I'm a PhD student at Stanford University. And along with my co-organizer, Ranjay Krishna, we are excited to welcome you to this year's installment. This is actually our fifth installment of this challenge, which first debuted at CVPR 2017. And over the next several minutes, I'll be introducing the task of dense captioning events in videos and announce the winners of this year's challenge. Afterwards, we'll be hearing about the technical details for the top two submissions from the winners themselves. So data sets for videos started by primarily focusing on assigning videos with category level labels, such as playing the piano. And to describe more detailed activities, later data sets incorporated sentence descriptions at the level of the full video, like a man playing a piano in front of a crowd. But a single video level sentence can miss the complex overlapping events that are happening concurrently. For example, we also have a woman singing along with the elderly man who is playing. And in the background, we can observe that while those two events are happening, a third event where a man dancing along with the music and singing is happening in the background while the crowd reacts. So to better capture these denser overlapping events, ActivityNet Captions focuses on the dense captioning events task, which has two steps, describing the events in natural language and localizing each of them in time. The data set itself consists of 20,000 videos. And on average, there are three to four sentences that are temporally localized per video with 13 words per sentence. The temporal localizations of these events when combined cover nearly 95% of the full video on average. At the time of release, ActivityNet Captions was the first data set to provide captions for dense overlapping events at its scale. And in comparison with dense image captioning data sets, we see that ActivityNet Captions provides a greater focus on verbs and adverbs, focusing more on the actions and activities that are present in the videos. We can also see that the original ActivityNet activity label is often present in the video descriptions themselves, especially for more commonly recognizable activities like playing the violin. As context for the modeling techniques, we can, we'll review the challenges that are associated with the dense captioning events task. And to do this, we'll first take a look at the original baseline model from 2017. Here, we see that there's two key components. First, the model must localize the events in videos. And second, it uses the localized events to generate the descriptions. Our first challenge is that we need to extract strong input representations from the video. Recent work, uh, has leveraged 3D convolutional uh, neural networks, such as C3D as the backbone uh, for the video feature extraction. More recent architectures and, and features have, have leveraged uh, 3D convolutional networks, uh, such as I3D, R2 plus 1D, S3D, and X3D, among others. We also see for designs that are more focused on efficiency, uh, features that include more recent efficient architectures for action recognition that substitute 3D convolutions for other primitive operations, such as learnable 3D shift in the case of Rubik's net or uh, 3D uh, self-attention uh, in the case of Timesformer and similar architectures. The second challenge is to leverage these uh, video features to extract and uh, the proposals, the, that is the, the time regions for the events themselves um, across the different uh, time scales over the full long input video sequence. And to do this, uh, architectures for dense captioning events often leverage proposal generation techniques. 
the original baseline leveraged uh, a proposal based on the DAPS architecture. Uh, but architectures since then have largely leveraged uh, more recent proposal generation techniques, such as single stream temporal action proposals, or SST, and future variants of it, and uh, boundary matching network, or BMN. Uh, these proposals are also then uh, fed into separate systems for proposal re-ranking. And recent techniques, uh, such as the event sequence generation network, uh, have leveraged a pointer network to uh, attend over and re-rank these, these events so that you get the, the set of events that really matter to the captioning task. Once we have these events, the third challenge is to generate and filter the natural language descriptions that properly take event context into account. And this involves a caption generation architecture uh, that often has some sequence modeling as well as some sort of caption sampling or re-ranking uh, um, component. Uh, and this incorporates uh, explicit reinforcement learning techniques from the uh, CIDR or Meteor uh, metrics themselves. There's also a re-ranking component, uh, which leverages an external model that associates video and language components together. And that's useful for making sure that the final set of captions that are provided are semantically meaningful to the, to the original video and capture an appropriate uh, natural diversity in the language itself. Here are some example baseline model predictions from the original ICCV model. We have two videos. On the left, we have a video of a person playing uh, Frisbee with their dog. And we see that the captions there provide uh, some context and generally makes sense with the overall set of activities that are happening there. On the right, we have an instructional video where there's a person uh, making a Caesar salad and it's describing the dense set of events that uh, combine that, that combine together to form that uh, the sequence of events for for that task. Now, while these events are generally Tie, cor uh, correlated and tied with the video that, that's playing, we see that there is still room for some improvement. And that's what's happened over the last several years. Before we get into some of those details, um, a brief aside to describe some of the, the related data sets that have come from the ActivityNet captions data set. So one key example of this is the ActivityNet entities data set from uh, Zhao et al. Uh, in, that was introduced in 2019. And this is the ActiveNet Entities data set. Uh, this is now also a challenge task uh, in the ActiveNet workshop. And we encourage you to take a look at their results and, uh, and challenge uh, details at this website. So now for the details from this year's challenge. At a glance, we had 10 teams participate this year with 24 entries. And our evaluation metric combines both the detection or localization aspect as well as the, the captioning aspect. We, uh, shown here are the analogs for the metric in the image captioning space. That is intersection over union as, as the key metric for detection. In our case, we are looking at the localization in time. So it's temporal intersection over union and then uh, on the right-hand side, we have the captioning uh, component which, for which we use Meteor. And overall, we take the average Meteor uh, across a range of temporal intersection over union thresholds. Some common themes that we observed this year across submissions. For part one, which has to do with the video features, there was a huge focus from the submissions on improving this component and exploring it. Uh, there were three main subcomponents here. The first was um, pushing the, the boundary in terms of the different mo uh, multimodality uh, modal, uh, modes that were used as input. Uh, so not just RGB input, but also including audio features or language features based on automatic speech recognition transcriptions, in addition to the motion and concept embedding features. For encoders, 
uh, challenge participants used newer architectures such as slow fast or some of the more recent efficient architectures. And in terms of pre-training, a number of the, the winning submissions leveraged temporally sensitive pre-training or TSP uh, pre-training for, for, for their uh, winning solution, along with large pre-training data sets. For part two, the event localization component, uh, challenge participants leverage uh, proposal networks based on the standard techniques, as well as re-ranking proposals similarly uh, based on standard techniques. And for part three, caption generation, uh, challenge participants often used uh, the state-of-the-art word encoders with decoders based on recurrent, recurrent and attention components, as well as across the board, or rather across all three parts, uh, we noticed a couple uh, submissions with cross-modal BERT architectures that handled the multitask component jointly. In terms of the metrics and ranking, uh, challenge participants often employed uh, SCST, which is a, a technique that uh, incorporates a reinforcement learning component based on the uh, metrics themselves, Meteor and CIDR. And then also a re-ranking component based on a video semantic matching model. Some potential directions uh, that we uh, can consider for further improvement into next year's challenge. Um, one of these would be pushing the long tail concept diversity in captions. So better handling of lower frequency words or rarer concepts. The second is consideration of better evaluation metrics. So things like Meteor and CIDR, which are based on n-grams, are well known and well established to not correlate with human judgment. So uh, reconsideration or, or better consideration of these, of these uh, metrics and judgments would be a key avenue for growth in this space. In terms of the models themselves, another uh, component that, that would be interesting to see in the future would be a incorporation of spatiotemporal scene graphs and similar data structures that can improve compositionality and data efficiency uh, within the events themselves. And then finally, uh, the advent, the recent, especially with the, the, the recent results in large scale multimodal pre-training, um, it'll be interesting to see how continuing to explore that space of proxy vision and language tasks at scale can further uh, have improvements in the dense event captioning task, especially when we consider how these models can better leverage common sense to improve fine grain uh, ge caption generation. So now for the overall results. The original baseline from 2017 uh, got a final score of 4.82. And in fourth place uh, from Fudan University, uh, the final score was 9.82. In third place from Renmin University in Inria, the final score is 9.96. In second place from SUS Tech and HKU University, uh, we have a final score of 10.0. And in first place from Alibaba Damo Academy, uh, we have a final score of 10.33. And now we'll be joined by the top two winners, the first place winner and the second place winner uh, for them, uh, for their talks uh, where they'll be describing the technical details of their approaches. Thank you for joining us today for the 2021 Activity Net Workshop at CVPR, and hope you enjoy the rest of the workshop discussions. Hello, everyone. In this talk, I'll give a brief introduction to our approach to Activity Net Dense Captioning Challenge 2021. Our team members are from Alibaba's Machine Intelligence Technology Lab. This is the outline of our presentation. We'll start by the introduction and then describe the four components in our proposed framework, namely feature extraction, event proposal generation, event caption generation, and caption re-ranking and example. Finally, we talk about the experiment and the conclusion. Unlike normal video captioning, where only one sentence is given to describe each short video clips, Dense video captioning aims to generate a sequence of captioner events 
to fully describe the videos, where the events can be a sequential or summary and the details. It is important to both correctly model the relationship between events and take care of the coherence between event captions. Given on trim the video, we extract all frames with 16 FPS and extract non-overlapping audio segments with 2 seconds per segment. Then we extract segment level features include slow fast, VIVIT, times former video feature pre-trained on Kinetics dataset, Vigish audio features pre-trained on YouTube at Million dataset, ASR BERT feature where ASR is done using public cloud API and the BERT embedding is tracked with an open source model. We also use the provided TSP video feature which is pre-trained for localization tasks. These features are temporarily aligned and are concatenated to construct the second level representation. Event proposal generation follows a two-stage approach. We start with candidate proposal generation, where 100 top candidate proposals are generated using the boundary matching network. Then we need to select a subset of proposals. Here we compare uh, two methods for the subset selection. One way is to rank proposals according to the predicted BMN confidences and select the top K as final event sequence. The other is to adopt the event sequence generation network, in short ESGN, to sequentially select the subset of proposals. The event caption generation module adopts the encoder-decoder structure introduced in 1 et al. 2020. For the, captioning for the captioning encoder, we use the TSRM module, where each proposal is represented using all proposals features by considering temporal relation and semantic relation. For the captioning decoder, the hierarchical RNN module is used for, for multi-sentence generation, and uh, a cross-model getting is used to effectively fuse visual and linguistic information. For more details can be found in one's technical report. For our final submission, we also apply the caption re-ranking and example. We train a video semantic matching model and re-rank the captions by predicting the matching score and the number of unique words. After the caption re-ranking step, we example the top five captions by applying the multi-sentence uh, compression module to generate one final predicted sentences to compensate for missing information. We also added the high frequency words from the rest of the captions. This slide gives our experimental settings. We keep words that, that appear um, larger than or equal to five times and the truncate sentences at 30 words. We initialize the 300-dimensional word embedding matrix with the pre-trained glove embedding. We use two different dataset split. The official split contains about 10,000 videos for training, 4,900 videos for validation, and 5,000 videos for testing. The modified split contains about 14,000 videos for training, 1,000 videos for validation, and 5,000 videos for testing. We first train our model using the official split, official uh, dataset split with the, with the ground truth proposals and cross entropy loss. We then continue model training using the modified split with the self create uh, with SCST training method and sample the BMN top 100 proposals. Um, experimental results. For event sequence generation, we found that selecting top K is a simple and an efficient way to generate the event sequence, while ESGN can balance between precision and record. We, we find that the BMN top three proposals reach high performance on validation set, but the ESGN performs better on test set. So we use ESGN for following steps. In this slide, we show the performance in the 
a first stage of training scheme using ground truth proposals and a caption to train our model with cross entropy loss. We find Timesformer, Timesformer achieves the best performed single feature. Direct concatenation of multiple features does not necessarily lead to better performance. In our experiments, VIVIT plus Timesformer plus Vigish is the best feature combination. So we keep this feature for all following training schemes. This slide shows a result for additional training scheme. With SCST, the meteor score increases from 8.24 to 10.22 on the generated proposals. With the modified larger train set, the meteor score further increases to 10.95. Finally, with the caption re-ranking an example, our framework achieved 11.80 meteor on the validation generated proposals and 10.33 on the test generated proposals. Here I want to share one interesting observation. Using ground truth proposals, we find that the caption performance for the first proposal is usually the best among all event proposals. So we generate a fake predicted proposal. The ground truth the first proposal as the only predicted proposal and fit this proposal to our caption model and find that the meteor score is 17.97 to compare with the 15.88 using all ground truth proposals. Conclusion. We extract the multiple video, um, vision features as well as audio and textual features. We systematically explore the performance of these features and find a good combination. Our framework achieves the top performance on the event dense captioning task of Active, ActivityNet Challenge 2021. We plan to further explore the, ex the effect of event proposals on final captioning score. Here are our team members, Zheng Xing, Ming Li, Wei Wei Zhang, Bing Wang, and Pan Pan. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Zhu Liu, a master's student from Southern University of Science and Technology. I will introduce our solution to activity net challenge, namely semantic web pre-training for dense video captioning. Dense video captioning is a multitask problem which aims to produce both the locations and the captions of all events in the video. We tackle this task in a three-stage way. First, we extract the video features by a pre-trained action recognition backbone, then localize the possible events by generating and selecting event proposal, and finally, we perform the event captioning model to obtain corresponding captions. Specifically, in the stage of feature extraction, multimodal representations, including RGB, optical flow, and audio, are extracted offline, and this mainly relies on the pre-trained models for different pre-training tasks. Then, in the stage of event proposal generation and selection, we need high-quality proposals to locate the event separated from the background. Also, we need to consider the balance between precision and recall. Finally, in stage of event captioning, we hope to generate an event description which is fluent, relevant, coherent, and precise. And that is related to a fusion of visual features and linguistic clues. Here we want to highlight the proposed pre-training task design for dense video captioning. We call it semantic aware pre-training. The proposed of the new pre-training task is based on two motivations. First, we notice that fine-grained semantic concepts really matter. A video usually contains various semantic concepts such as objects, attributes, actions, and scenes, and they are always represented by different kinds of parts of speech, such as noun, adjective, adverb, and verb. We also observe that the semantic concepts bear the main meaning of the sentence. For example, in the right picture, given a video where a boy is playing basketball, several semantic concepts could be detected, young, boy, 
practice dribbling, basketball, and gym. However, when using action recognition model, only dribbling or basketball can be detected, which cannot fully describe the details as much as possible. Another hypothesis we would like to emphasize is that the higher relevance of pre-training task to a download, downstream task, the better the features a model could extract. However, most pre-trained tasks are just about action classification, which are only limited, with only limited class labels. And we argue that the semantic classification task is closer to dense video captioning than action classification. Then we proposed a semantic web pre-training. Our pre-training framework is based on TSP a temporally sensitive pre-training method for the localization related task in untrimmed videos. This work is published on Archive 2020. The original TSP includes an R2 plus 1D backbone and two pre-training tasks, action classification and temporal region classification. In our model, we ended another pre-training task, semantic concept classification, which encourage the network to classify the right semantic concepts in videos. To construct the ground truth semantic concept labels, first we assign the input video clip with a ca caption, which has the largest overlap. Then we extract the most frequent semantic concepts for each caption. Here, top 1000 most frequent nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs in the training set are used as semantic concepts. The semantic concept prediction can be seen as a multi-label classification task. One problem is that a video has only several positive labels but much more negative labels. This could contribute to the unbalanced problem between positive and negative labels. To solve that, we employ the asymmetry laws, which could dynamically express the easy negative samples and focus on hard negatives. For other parts, to utilize various input modalities, such as RGB, optical flow, and audio, we use different pre-training tasks, including classification for image, audio, action, temporal region, semantic concepts. Finally, we go to the best feature combination strategy, that is SA, TSP, and I3D, and VGGs. Then we use a dense boundary generation model and a modified ESG model to generate and select event proposals. Finally, for event captioning, we use TSRM and hierarchical RM proposed in our previous work to generate high quality captions. Now I will briefly introduce the encoder and decoder for captioning. Temporal semantic relation module is proposed to incorporate temporal and semantic relation by temporal position encoding and self-attention. Then the refined feature is fed into a hierarchical RNN including sentence level and word level features to utilize the information of historical sentences. A cross-model guide is employed to merge the sentence level and word level information adaptively. Then is our experiment, the official split of activity net captions dataset is 10,009. 4,917, 5,044 videos for training, validation, and testing. We used the modified split, 13,926 for training, 1,000 for validation. For training procedure, we first pre-trained R2 plus 1D as our backbone on IG665 million plus kinetics with action labels. Then, find that backbone on activity net 1.3 with both action and semantic labels. After that, we trained the event captioning model and then fine tune it by SCST, that is self-critical sequence training. 
we employ several different models to generate captions, to ensemble different captions. We chose the best settings from the predicted set by two criteria. One is the number of unique semantic concepts. The other is the max inverse document frequency. Here is our result on the validation set. Our method as ATSP achieved the best performance on all evaluation matrix, showing that joint prediction of semantic labels and action labels could exploit more meaningful features. Then, VGGs and ResNet 152 are pre-trained on merely image data and audio data. The unsatisfying performance may owe to the large discrepancy between the pre-trained and downstream tasks. This figure shows our incremental progress by using feature combination that is SATSP plus I3D plus VGGs enlarge the training set from 10,009 to 13,926 and using SCST and finally model example using five different models. Finally, we got to the final media of 10 on the test set. Thank you for your listening. That's all.